248-1007. The Alan Cox Show. Hey, how you feeling? You okay? WMMS. Buzzard Radio. Uh, no Cavs basketball tonight. They will be back on Thursday night post All-Star break here at home. Be hosting the Magic. And then they'll head to Philly to play the Sixers. They go up to D.C. Play the Mavericks back here before the uh, month is over. But tomorrow night, uh, Orlando Magic. I'm sorry, Thursday night, Orlando Magic in town. Uh, it's a 7 o'clock tip-off here on the Buzzard and on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, you can listen to. I'll be giving you details very soon, too, on um, hearing Guardians baseball preseason here on the Buzzard. I think we're going to be airing a couple of those games. I don't know if we are going to be preempted, but um, I will um, keep you abreast of all that. Alan, did you see Office Space turn 25 years old yesterday? I did not see that. Mike Judge's Office Space, which I think flopped. Right? Don't his movies usually, like, they don't really do much while they're out? I remember seeing Idiocracy in the theater. Yeah. They don't, they never really, and I don't think they ever expect his movies. I think there was a little bit of a higher expectation with Office Space because Jennifer Aniston was in it. Yeah, she was like the big get for that movie, mm -hmm. big star of the movie. Yeah. Stephen Root and uh, Gary Cole was, uh, what was his name? Gary Cole was, um, he was the manager. Nope. He was the, oh, oh, Gary Cole was mm -hmm. uh, guy. Lumberg. Lumberg. I you was, had sex with Lumberg? Lumberg after. Right. Lumberg? Yeah, because they started off as just those Mike Judge animations. I think that that would run during Saturday Night Live. MTV would have these little interstitials of Milton. Mm -hmm. You know, because Mike Judge for a while, you know, he had a blank check. Beavis and Butthead, I mean, he could do whatever he wanted. And um, and then they turned Stephen Root into Milton in the movie, but it was just kind of a background thing. But the initial animated short, he was the main guy. And so, you know, people of a certain age, that's a movie that they will still quote. Oh, yeah. You know, what would you say it is you do here? I'm a people person. <laughs> And so, you know, the studio... I jump to conclusions, Matt. <laughs> jump to conclusions. They were... Um, uh, the studio was like, this movie very much has to be a PG-13. And the cast was like, no, I don't... I think it did end up being PG-13, No, it? it was rated R. Was, was it an R? R? Oh, okay. I thought that they... There's boobs in it, and there's <laughs> a lot... Not yeah. a lot, but enough F-bombs to make it... R-rated, which okay. I think was the way to go. All right. And so... And, and the soundtrack alone, there's a lot of F-bombs. Well, David Herman, who was the guy who played Michael Bolton in the movie, he had been on Mad TV, and I think primarily now, he basically does cartoon voices. You hear him in Bob's Burgers, you hear him in The Great North, you hear him in all those. He does a ton of cartoon voices, and I can never hear his voice in those voices. That's how good he is. I can never hear David Herman in those characters. But, um, yeah, Jennifer Aniston was, um, the studio said, we need somebody to draw <laughs> in this movie. And because of Friends, obviously, she was a household name. And they're like, we need somebody recognizable in this movie. And somehow she, uh, they got her to say yes. I guess they shot her scenes pretty quickly. Yeah, she's not in a ton of scenes, and they all pretty much take place at the restaurant that she was working at. Yeah. But it's a great movie. I haven't watched it in a while. Maybe well, I'll revisit it. When they added Ass Clown to Webster's Dictionary in 2018, they credited Office Space. Hmm. Of course, Michael Bolton referred to the singer as a no-talent ass clown. Why should I change my name? He's the one that sucks. <laughs> And uh, that movie so, yeah. made me feel seen. Office uh, space, yeah. Growing up, uh, Billy Squire. Oh right, it was uh, yeah. Although I don't think that 
Billy Squire sucks. I think his music's pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. I just heard some Billy Squire the other day. Me too. And I was like, hey, this is pretty good. When we were having lunch after our big hike on Saturday, or, yeah, that was Saturday, some Billy Squire came on, and I was like, hey, Billy Squire. Hopefully not Rock Me Tonight. No, it was. was, Hopefully it was In the Dark or The Stroke or uh, something along those lines. When I see the name of it, I'll remember. Mm Mm-hmm. Where was lunch? Where they were playing Billy uh, Squire? Jimbo's Burgers and Beer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Down there by Hocking Hills? Uh, everybody wants you. Everybody yeah. wants you. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good song, too. It was like a big, big hit for him. And then everything else was... In the Dark was good. I think that yeah. was the one that I heard. We were coming back from um, getting some sush the other night. And somebody was playing uh, In the Dark by Billy Squire. 100.7 WMMS Brother Wolf from Billy Squire. He's been popping up again. You know, for a while, people were like, oh, Billy Squire took a job. He's, like, working the He's working like parks, parks management park. yeah. in, in Central Park or mm-hmm. something. Off of the Emotions in Motion album. This is when he really hit. Two or three albums in. But, yeah, he's a always an underrated guitar player. Mm, yeah, pretty good. Anywho. Yeah, they're just rocking a little classic vinyl. Yep. That. Jimbo's Burgers and Beers. Good burger. O-Face, another one from uh, Office Space. I always forget about O-Face. Show sure, over my O-Face. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, two chicks at the same time, man. Diedrich Bader's the next door neighbor. It's a great cast. Yeah, really it good. It really is a great cast. Yep. I was catching up on Louder Milk this weekend. You know, the uh, Ron Livingston show that was, it's found a, a new life on Netflix. Is this there a is, new season? Uh, the, there's th- they only did three. I think they're yeah. talking to Netflix about doing a new one. That would be great. Cause... You kind of get mixed results when you drag Netflix into doing a new season of a, of a show that was somewhere else originally. But Ryan Regan's in it, and I think it's funny. It's a very funny show. But that's really when some shows blow up is when they... They show up on Netflix, mm-hmm. and then everybody starts watching them because it's just in front of more people. But, yeah, that's a funny show. So Office Space, 25 years as of yesterday. Alan Bill's a sneakerhead. Did he get those Trump shoes? I, I did not get the Trump shoes, no. <laughs> well, they sold out so fast. I was not really in the market for Trump shoes. Uh, not really my— uh... but They're so attractive. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're like spray-painted gold— yeah, Trump did a – he put the con in sneaker con over the weekend there in Philly. Went there for a uh, drop of – you know, he's got to pay these hundreds of millions of dollars in judgment fees. And so I, I, I guess he – I don't know. He's always merching something. It's not those dumbass NFTs or those mugshot T-shirts. He's like, let's do some sneakers. And, uh, boy, they loved him there. I, I assume I can't hear over the booze. But... Wow. A lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion in this room. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. <laughs> you got to hand emotion. it to that guy. People are like, boo. And he's like, thank you. So nice. Thank you. Thank you. Don't trust your eyes and ears. He's just there to talk to the kids, man. And we're going to remember the young people and... We're going to remember Sneaker Con, you know that. We're going to remember the young people, the young people especially that wear sneakers, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, you did not get the uh, Trump sneaker drop. No, I did not. Well, it's perfect. If there's any market that's tailor-made for ripping people off, by the way, it is the sneaker resale market. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who scoop these up Open to resell them. Yeah, and make money, sure. That, Flip them online. I, I don't know it's if they're going to go market. that way, though. Huh? I don't know if people are going to buy pay for that. Why? Uh, it's just the market's pretty saturated right now. 
and everything's kind of down. Yeah, but I'm just saying the people who want these particular shoes, they're they not sneakerheads. They're, yeah. they're Trump fans. Well, we'll see if they'll – but they have so many things of Trump that they already have to buy. Mm. Like he's always he's, – he's saturated the market with Trump merch too, you know? Yeah. Let's no, see some people scoop it all up. Let's see what they're going for. The Trump sneakers. I don't see them on the – Not on, on there yet? Not on StockX. No. Well, they'll probably show up on eBay or something, yeah, right? I mean, I, again, I don't think the people looking for those are sneaker heads. I think that they're – you got to fish where the fish are. So you, you post them for sale on Truth Social or something. That kid, David Hogg, he was one of the uh, Parkland – School shooting survivors, this kid David Hogg, who was kind of the first out of the gate and getting on television and talking to people about the aftermath of that, and he's been very, very vocal in anti-gun violence legislation, things like that. He bought the URL, shoptrumpsneakers.com, and then people go to it and um, find out that it's uh, to call your members of Congress to try to strengthen uh, anti-gun legislation. Because we had Joe Briggs in here last week, and he's talking about scooping up all those URLs, <laughs> yeah, right? It's funny stuff. Uh, oh, this David Hogg kid. He grabs shop trunk sneakers, trumpsneakers.com, and, and um, people go there looking for those shoes. That's not what they find. But, yeah, sneaker con over the weekend. Who even knew? I'm not a sneakerhead. I don't know these things. I know my son has uh, bought and flipped a lot of sneakers over the years. Make quite a bit of money doing that. But, uh, yeah. You can leave us voicemails, by the way. You can leave messages on the iHeartRadio app. little talk back button there. But uh, coming back from the weekend, we always have a lot of people checking in on the after hours line, which is 216-986-8903. Valley Cat. It's really early in the morning. But have you guys heard this new Mr. Ruder? Commercial. It's a bunch of children singing about poop and pee. It's a little disturbing. So give it a listen. Love you, love me. I hate the show. I have heard that. We just aired it, I think. The Mr. That's yeah. actually a really old commercial that they've brought back. That's like a 20 year old spot with those kids singing about poop and pee. Everybody poops, everybody pees. Mommy, will you call Mr. Ruder, please? Because I got poop. And they got pee. I mean, <laughs> out of the mouths of babes. Yeah, that's like a, somebody was telling me that's like a 20-year-old commercial. So those kids all have jobs now. I wonder if any of them work for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Or maybe they work for Mr. Reuter. Listen, you want to, and again, what worked before is working again, according to that guy. You know, because it bends your ear. You go, hey, those kids are singing about poop. But that's where kids, you know, the book Everybody Poops. That's when you, you get kids talking about that stuff. So it makes perfect sense that they, somewhere along the line, they go, hey, you know what we should just do? Just have kids singing about poop. It, to me, it would be creepier if it was grown-ups singing that song. He's like, yeah, it's a little weird. I think it would be really, because those kids, I, ga- I don't know a lot, but I guarantee they still poop and pee. <laughs> so the messaging works. That's the power of advertising. Those kids all, I bet, to a person still poop and pee. But it would be exponentially more unsettling if it was a chorus of adults. Although I would say to the Mr. Ruder people, try that and see what happens. You'll probably have diminishing returns there. I think the kids is, are the way to go. But my understanding is that's an old uh, jingle that they've brought back. So... I don't know if there's a... Now, there's a documentary. You know how they have a documentary for every goddamn thing now? Because you can basically shoot one on your phone. So the barriers to entry are practically nil now, and everybody goes, I got a good idea. I'll just follow this dope around, and I'll, you know, I'll air it at film festivals. or So everybody's doing documentaries. Somebody do one. The Mr. Rooter kids. (laughs) Where are they now? That'd probably be really difficult to... Track down every kid that was in that. I don't know how many are in, and I don't yeah. know what ages they are. But there's a documentary. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, documentarians of Northeast Ohio. It can be a short film, right? 
Where are the Mr. Rooter poop and pee kids? I want to know what they're up to. Are they all, because it doesn't sound, that's not a giant chorus of children. It's probably the kids of employees, it's, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. So like, hey, you, hey, want to do this? You know, want to do this song? No, there isn't a kid alive who would say no to that. What's the song? You guys are going to sing about poop and pee. Hells yes. I will do that. If somebody had come to me as a child, you don't even have to tell them what it's for. Hey, you want to sing a song about poop? I'm already doing it I was in class. Doing that. I was already doing it. Do I get to write the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me get Desmond Child in here. Can I, jot some stuff down. Can I make it about my friend Jason? Because I already got it, like four of those songs. Yeah. And Jason eats poop. Jason smells like poop. <laughs> Jason wants to marry poop. They're like, no, no, no. We need to keep this anonymous. Hmm. All right, but it's a somebody, message. Can somebody marry the poop in the song? Who's J- Jason? Was a kid you went to school with? Yeah. Oh, okay. He was a kid you didn't like. No, he was my friend, but like it was oh. way, like busting his chops. And like, oh, I see. J- yeah, Jason wants to marry poop. He wants to marry poop. <laughs> wow. And that was really before the uh, human marrying poop legislation was passed. <laughs> you know, marriage but- is between one man and one poop. <laughs> That's what Jason wants you to think. That's right. <laughs> my opponent says that people can't get married to turds. <laughs> Well, I don't believe that. I believe this is a land of liberty. Anywho, for the guy who uh, called, yes, I have heard that, and uh, I'm a big fan. I know nothing about that company other than they have uh, that song. And those kids, again, 20-year-old jingle. Those kids are out there doing something. Probably have kids of their own. And I wonder if they teach their children that song. Or when it's on, you know, let's say they're on, in, in, they're in the car. They go, hey, that's your dad when I was eight. That's me singing that song about poop. It'd be harder to tell your own children not to do that. They go, well, I heard you doing it. They go, well, do as I say, not as I do. You know, my own child has had those conversations with me. Why were you talking about uh, uh, beer holes and penises on the radio, Daddy? Right. So that's what pays the bills, honey. Mm-hmm. We've got a break here. If you want to send a text, 35.